So let's see. Let's see if how is this can get themselves a good start. They're on the CT side. And Crimson is going to be pushing the door whilst his teammates are also pressuring towards a main. And they have the bomb there as well. And two players distracting in B storage. So this looks kind of ridiculous to Hellraiser. Is it? And they are deciding, hey, let's just try and figure it out by sending simple over the top, over the boost. You're going to find the frag onto Crims. And that's going to make it to a 4 and 4. The bomb is still undecided where it's going to be ending up. The aggression, the, the aggression continues from Hellraisers, that's what I was trying to say. They ha we had a two-man push through uh, T Warehouse, which netted another frag. They're looking to garner yet more frags. Oscar, they will finally go down. Man advantage continues, however, for Hellraisers. Simple with nice taps, getting Pronax multiple bullets into the chest. Just a W remaining for only a few seconds. Fnatic won the knife round and chose to start on the T side, Dan. You appear to have no opinion on this. Most of the time you'd expect to see the uh, all the teams start on the CT side. Maybe it's a warm-up thing. Something you see more in best of threes and best of ones. But I can't imagine why unless they just want to throw off their opponents so they have their own element of surprise because obviously Hellraisers are somewhat of an unknown at the moment they to might their opponents. They might just feel like they're going to have a, an easier time playing, uh, getting rounds off this newer lineup by testing their, their CT side than vice versa. Because they should... Because on maps, map to map, with a new lineup, it, it, it can be easier on CT or T side, and maybe that's how they perceive the situation. They think it's going to be harder for Horaces on, on the CT side. And they're going for an execute here, and this is their opportunity to break the economy straight away, get the reset in. So it's quite nice. They've done it, of course, with the nades. And uh, <coughs> right now, Horaces, they have a lot of players on this ball site, four players, in fact. And there is a Flusher who's in middle going for the luck. He's going to actually try to actually backstab. He's getting a kill there. Two frags for Fnatic as they push in, and everyone here is, is present for Hellraisers. But they're all getting taken down. This is very nice for Fnatic. Wow. Yeah, not over yet, though, because look how tagged all of these players are. Angel could make a lot of money here and win the round for his team. He just needs the one versus one. That's all he needs. Just to try and avoid getting traded here. And he's doing it well so far. Olofmeister down to 48. He gets the reload in as well. The fast reload with the MP9. Just down to 5 HP, though. Looking for these final two plays. Prenex blind. Going to pre-fire around the corner. Not make it, though. Angel's got the kit as well. He could do this. Olofmeister's out of position. Oh, he's going to peek too far. And Olofmeister's going to take it for his team with the M4 as well. What was really interesting about that push from Fnatic is the it was like a constant stream of grenades coming out before they pushed for about 20 seconds they just seemed to go on for ages and then when they did finally push it just came out fantastically well for them well that's uh, exactly the kind of uh, result that they were looking for they reset how is this right away and it could be one of the reasons again why they would have gone with the T side. They're thinking, okay, this this lineup is new. It's going to have a harder time, uh, you know, for people to have the awareness of who is going to deal with what in what situation on the CT side. Who looks where, and so on and so forth. Because Harris just had all almost all the players on the bomb side there, and it's a nice execute into the A bomb site, or rather coordinated movement from Fnatic from middle and the middle pinch, the pinch from middle, and from main. And they clean up all these pistoling players. So it's a great anti eco played out by the tank here, very safe. And that said, actually, nobody's taken any damage either. So that's pretty cool for Fnatic too. And this really spells a lot of uh, uh, trouble for Hellraisers because there was a match recently. I think it was, uh, was it? I think it was Envious versus Fnatic. I think it may have been yesterday. Um, I have no idea somewhere. It was. I don't have. Nope. It wasn't yesterday, James. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But it happened at some point. So uh, it's a great, great match because Fnatic basically got completely wrecked. They, they got like what three rounds or something. And it's just based on the fact that they, you know, they, they had so few opportunities on the CT side because they got uh, they, just, they just got broken economically again and again. And you get so few chances to, to get back into the rounds. And then when you do, you have to win so many rounds before the, the, your opponents will be ecoing and so on. So that's kind of the situation Fnatic are going for, and that's what they're they're building and cultivating right now, and it's working at this point. Of course, it's the last eco going in for Hellraisers. Next round, they will have a buy. And you can see uh, Hellraisers with a general movement towards the A side of the map. So they're, they're kind of going for a bit of a gamble, going for a bit of a read, but it's going to be an attack towards A. And that's what you want to try to do. You want to try to uh, rotate preemptively. That's why the information game is so important. That way you can, instead of you know, being reactive, you can be proactive and be there to tackle them. Use the defense to your advantage as opposed to He's being able to use it against you when you rotate in. And there it is. Static now pushing in, deciding to finally go for it. And they 
here, I'm picking up all these players, showing a good cognizance of all the sneaky angles of this map. Nice smokes going in as well to cover their approach, playing it super safe, protecting all the edges by keeping all the money alive on that side. I'm not going for crazy pushes. JW will find himself Steco and Kucha in middle, and now it's down to simple with the Deagle to get some damage in. And it would be pretty glorious for him to find some damage here. There's one frag, but the trade is in immediately. And that's only one more dead for Fnatic. So Hellraisers, you know, they'll get the buy-in now, but unfortunately they were not they were not able to mitigate the kind of uh, the the disadvantage of their position of the fact that they had to kind of save by getting economic damage to their opponents to make it a little bit easier for themselves. Now they finally have the buy. So Harris is in with the Orp on Oscar, and this is what we talked about earlier. He seems to be more of the the Orper. And the simple kind of picks it up more dynamically. I, I like that setup as well. Let's we'll see what he can do with it. Fast plays. All of, yeah, again, it's very common when you uh, are a CT smoking main that uh, there's almost always a gap in the top right of where Oscar's looking, basically, or the top left if you are Olaf Meister. If you stand on the lockers, mainly with a sniper, you can see a gap there. You can see Olaf Meister's looking in a different direction. Um, but it's that same gap which is almost unavoidable if you're, if you're the one throwing the smoke grenade so Olaf trying to use all the uh, all the small edges possible there but we'll garner no results just yet maybe his position is a common one as that is a very nice nade Oscar coming in seek and destroy will be the order of the day for him JW has been boosted up hasn't revealed his position yet Angel's coming a bit hungry and Flush is going to get snapped regardless things are going well for Hellraiser so far oh yeah Oscar is looking the bomber as well this is the second shot, so will his teammate, simple. Oh, okay, he's not going to get anything done here. Be there. And it was surprising to me actually that Angel was able to kill... It was surprising to me that Angel was able to actually kill... Uh, um, who was it? It was J uh, Flusher in a position on the off angle as he pushed into the mid warehouse. Because that off angle is really dangerous, to be honest. It's very, very hard to predict that that's going to be popping up. But Angel, he's just he's just so fast sometimes, and uh, Flusher did go down, and it kind of went downhill from that point forwards. So Flusher should have seen his gun though long before. Like Angel should be never should never be getting that kill in that situation. Yeah, it's, 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 it is surprising. But there we go. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you look at the radar and you get shot down. Happened to me every now and then. So Oscar continuing with the AWP. Angel will pick up a gun in his travels. About three, three and a half K left on these Hellraiser's plays once they leave spawn, which is good going forward. Fnatic still with a round advantage. They will be back on the buy as well. Potentially fast play coming in towards A here. We've got flashes coming in and three people pushing towards A. And they've taken mid as well, super fast. We're going to have Angel getting caught on shorts, but the trade will come in. So mid will be back in control of the CT side. That said, Fnatic have a stronghold on the A site for the time being. Steve in with the kill on the Pronax there, the bomb is in the smoke, more or less. JW with the grab. But, so they've got time to work with here, they don't have to rush this, and I like that JW is going back, that's very smart. And Crims can basically hold on, use the smokes, as JW just sprints for the plant. And it's much more likely to get the, you know even get a plant by doing this play, so this is more or less the optimal play. And Crims, he could even get a couple kills here, that's absolutely possible, it's Crims, after all. They are, they are still, they're convinced that it's going to be on the uh, A bomb site, but the bomb's going to go down now. And now they realize, and Crims picks himself up for the second kill. Future's now going to get pinched from both sides, and uh, a bit of spray there, but now JW is fatigued, but he's going to go for the kill there. I think he felt that Kucha was still a little bit distracted, so uh, either way, wow, that was perfectly played out of Fnatic, Crims and JW, good call. Very, very nice indeed. So that money Hellraiser saved will allow them to get a, some semblance of a buyout in this round, but you can see it is severely limited. The smoke's being high priority there. Just to check off the initial points, we'll see what there is to offer. Fnatic have only one Molotov actually, but you can commonly see uh, positions like Simples being forced out with a Molotov, but JW will simply shoot him in the face instead. No Molotov needed. Three Hellraiser's plays left, and they are heading towards an eco here if things continue this way for them. Seco with just the Deagle will only get one frag. That's the bomb scene, though, which should cause a rotation for the team, or maybe a save as it is four versus two. Speaking of two, JW only has two HP, but that's not going to stop him from peaking. When will it ever? Oscar now to try and hold on to what he can. Yeah, so Fnatic have managed to actually find themselves in a position where they can re-break Hellraiser's economy. Because Hellraiser's actually, 
were able to win their uh, first buy round after getting reset, um, you know, having to go for the double eco, getting reset, and so on. They kind of they kind of just removed this this possibility that Fnatic could get this crushing momentum that I was uh, highlighting that is possible earlier. On. But now Fnatic are creating this situation again for Hellraisers. So Hellraisers will have to do again a very difficult job of basically going for two ecos and then just winning like consecutive rounds. But at, at this point. I would I would very much expect Fnatic they should be able to get at least ten rounds on the board in this uh, in this matchup now. I know there's quite a lot to, uh, to say from this five two position, but it's very likely Fnatic will get to the seven two position, and then uh, after after that, you know, the Hellraisers win that their one big chance or two big chances. So that's the, that's the thing here. They don't get many opportunities, Hellraisers. And Fnatic they are playing their anti eco here. They're all grouping up together in this A main. Area. There's three players on the site. They're using the grenades really well. Look at that. Just nading out these uh, these pistoling players on the site, using the smokes to their advantage and getting the flashes in there for all of So you can go and frag close with the SMG, jumping around these angles. He is the man by design that is moving forwards with the SMG. And that, that's a great anti eco from Fnatic. Yep, looking a lot more confident as these rounds continue. And again, Hellraisers have an opportunity to buy here, but again, all their resources will be limited. You can see Oscar. Got an M4, but just a HE. Do you buy HE there, or do you buy a smoke grenade? Where? If you're Oscar and you've only got $300 to buy a grenade. Do you buy a smoke? I would buy a smoke. Let's see what he chooses to do. He's gonna go straight, straight through the smoke. The fact that that smoke is all the way inside A allows him to do exactly that. He did it faster than I could explain. Angel's gonna get a frag onto Pronax elsewhere. Look how fast Fnatic are taking control of mid. It's not really being contested by our Razors. Happy to uh, live and concede map control as opposed to die fighting. They will use their numbers elsewhere. <clears throat> but it's, it's not too bad here for Fnatic because, you know, they. Oh, this is pretty bad though. Angel is very forward. Oh, he's gonna get taken down and Fnatic out, just out of nowhere. Snap of the fingers. Two players dead for our Razors. And Jadel will go in with a snap. He not, he's not gonna find the connection just yet. Now this is interesting, Fnatic can double back here. They can absolutely just fall back the, if it doesn't go their way, but okay, if Jado's gonna get the kill, Olaf wants to pick up the kill as well, then they can commit into the bomb site, no problem. They know where Oscar is as well, so this is this turned out very well for Fnatic. But, uh, but, but yeah, losing that first player going into mid and then being five versus four, that's still that's still really good actually for the T side. If, if that's a good T team with good calling, that's still a good position. It's kind of amusing to just watch JW and Olaf Meister fly around corners. It's so hard to track them, just to try and kill them, because Olaf Meister is moving so fast, it's absurd. But there we go. Five round lead for Fnatic now. Hellraiser's on the uh, eco once again, and this is a kind of opportunity for Fnatic to rack up a lot of rounds here. You, with a good spawn, the T's can stop the uh, CTs from getting over to white box in a cross such as that. Crims is going Super Saiyan now as well. This is looking really bad for Hellraisers because all the Fnatic players are starting to fire up here. They are, of course, on Nico in this round. Look at that. Just relentless. There is nowhere to hide from these players. Yeah, it's definitely rather difficult. So, uh, Fnatic, when will they be stopped by Hellraisers? I mean, you can see, again, you can see, like, you know, why they would have selected uh, the shooting side, I think. There's a lot of logic there if you think that this, because uh, I would say on cash, the hardest thing in like playing a mix on cash is not the is not the T side, it's the uh, it's the CT side. Actually. I would say the T side is generally harder as a mix, because coordinating between the two between the entire map is very difficult. Because uh, when you know team takes mid away from you, when they take you know the B storage or the A storage away from you, or they pr pressuring here or there, or you lose a player and you have to rotate, it's like, very hard to communicate and understand who's doing what, as as opposed to you know, maps which are more ingrained, like Dust2, or you know, so on and so forth, or Inferno, a little bit easier, a little bit more static in that sense. But oh, he's really messed that smoke up. That, if you look at the, where the blue line is, and look at where the white part of the wall is, he wants to throw the smoke to the left side of the white part. He was miles away from that. I don't know how he got that so wrong. But there we go. One wasted nade. See if the Fnatic players can exploit it. In fact, Ace will be taken down in the event area. Simple so going down towards A as well. Early disadvantages for Hellraisers. Yeah, it's not even coming down really to the strategy or the rotations, is it? It's just coming down to Fnatic playing solid solid rounds. And, and they're playing solid anti-ecos as well. That's like something to consider. But also they're hitting all the shots on the picking phase of, the, the, of their defaults. They're hitting all the shots. So that really sucks because then, you know, Hellraisers lose that round and then Fnatic play a super, super strong anti-eco and boom. 
it's, it's hard to get back in. And here it is again, you know, Fnatic, they take the advantage on the men. They're like, okay, let's group up, group up, group up together and take a side together. That's not stop. So here comes the Execute Kucha, gets traded, 4 versus 2, Oscar doing what he can, getting tagged through the smoke however, Sticko coming in to try and save him from the angle, he'll do it for a split second, KW going down, Sticko versus 2, playing the ladder, gets himself a 1 versus 1, got time to reload now, Flusher with pretty much full health, gonna fake the plant and Sticko is just gonna hold an angle towards the white box, so being a non-believer, Flusher maybe sees where he is now, gonna go for the plant, and the duel will begin. Yeah, this is what Flusher does, these kinds of situations. The clutch is for Stiko. Oh no, he had the angle, but Flusher goes to the peak and he had the, he the pre-fire in mind. He was visualizing that scenario and he had he pretty much had the shot primed and ready for Stiko. So nice uh, little clutch there from Flusher. And uh, hey, it was a nice nice uh, defense coming in from Hellraisers to make it into that kind of one-on-one -on -one situation. It did not look like it was going that way at all. And now Fnatic 9-2. And Hellraiser's is in a lot of trouble. All the fights are going for the fast timing pick. Ray and the, just the crab walk there. Gonna find any targets. And look at the quick nades in from Fnatic there. Just nading mid completely, but not going into mid. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Trying to force a bit of a rotation, making it look like a bit of a B, B split potentially. There are no splits. All the players are in B storage. Fnatic stacked the Molotovs in that round as well. So a bit of a change in strategy from their nade buying, purchasing in the previous round. Man down now. Sticko with a really good position actually because there is a Molotov you can throw onto the side to block most of these peaks. But that is another one. Good cover as well. And it's going to work out for Hellraiser so far. Only JW remaining now stuck in the vent. And Simple is going to be on the hunt. Oscar with the flank. JW should uh, be gone soon. Oh, is he going to go for the value? No, he <laughs> is gonna get it. Show me the money and the AWP. That's well cheeky. That is, that's actually kind of funny that he would try that. <laughs> nice. Anyway, uh, how races will pick up a round. And it was a little bit of a weird round from Fnatic. Again, you know, they, they threw all the nades into mid, but they, by design, it that like they were trying to kind of fake a little bit. And what you would normally do is, is that, that fakes you, you know, out for a little bit of a B split. And so you, you, you cause rotation towards B, and then they put four players towards B. So it's, it's kind of a bit, a bit of a weird round. Nice push there from Oscar into the dot. And a lot of chaos here towards A. Lots of uh, trading going on, one for one. But who is going to come out on top here? You know, will Fnatic continue to actually pressure A? They can uh, kill some time now and just play the rotation of the CTs. Yeah, the positioning, it looks like they could have maybe thrown a wall of smokes in mid indeed. I could see that from the minimap, their positioning was suggesting exactly that, so there's going to be a bit of unknown for Hellraisers towards mid, but they know there's action towards A. Simple stuck in the corner now, trying to pre-fire. Going to take down Prodex, but there's one more to find. Olaf Mice are looking for the trade flames as well. Crimson Weeder wants to do it. Angel soon to go down in mid after all, and Sicko will follow straight after. 10 to 3. Fnatic dominating Hellraisers here on cash. Yeah, they're just they're looking so consistent. One, this is one of the reasons why they are also uh, one of the... Uh, the most consistent teams in the leagues, league tables in the past is just because, um, okay, every player on Fnatic is really, 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 really good, which <laughs> which helps a lot. But their coordination and the kind of the, the way that they can stick to the basics, but also all of them so can be so explosive, can really, really help. And they don't mess up their anti. -eco. It's rare that that's the play anti eco. Whereas we see that that coming in a lot from uh, all of the NA teams that their anti eco anti ecos in general are a little bit flimsy. And uh, that should be the round that should be somewhat guaranteed. But from Fnatic, they are masters of that. 11 to 3 in her races will have an uphill struggle on the T side, to say the least. Got one more round to uh, try and attain for themselves. We'll see how much success they can find. Again, they've had many rounds where they've had limited supply of resources. You can see it again, Kucha with no nades. Simple, just a smoke. Oscar with just a flash. He's going to use that flash to flash himself in, but JW was close enough to the corner to know that he can back off and at least be behind the structure. Going for the repeat now, Oscar. Oh, they both knew they were there. Or at least uh, JW did, and he will win that duel. So, early man advantage for the Hellraiser side. JW down to 9 HP, but he only needs to fire faster than his opponents to be lethal here. Yeah, and Fnatic have a lot of options right now. They can go for the delayed mid take, knowing that usually mid will be left open. In a two, in a four-player situation for, for the CTs, and uh, they, they can also just try to barrel into a, a site with a five versus four or five versus two advantage essentially, 
And it looks like that's what they're kind of going for at the moment. A lot of pressure towards this A site, and the bomb is there. They're going to make their way in. Ultimately, with the first kill and the second kill, this is looking pretty catastrophic right now. Flusher is in from short, and wow, just completely dismantled in this round, Hellraisers. Like most of the rounds, it was nothing but fantastic. 12 to 3 is the end now. Is the light getting darker? Are all the fish dying in the pond? Is the bread going stale? Have the birds left the nest? I don't know what else. So on and so forth, Dan. Feel free to contribute if you can find anything novel. So, going into the pistol round now in the second half. Hellraisers have it all to do. Three players going to have armor, Kucha and Sticko with the nades. Double smoke, actually. I'm wondering where they are going to choose to use them. Headed over towards A main, you have to wonder if they're going to throw one, bounce it off the wall. Obviously, you can see that two-man push there. They can hear it. You can see Angel's gun. That might give them the clue. Oh, they're going to run away to try and engage. And uh, But they, they do have Angel looking towards the side to see what's going on. Oh, they're going to let them run here. And Fnatic are going to have this also no idea that the entire Hellraiser team is now on the A bomb site. They can play retake, though, as you commonly see on this map. Let's see what they can do. The only problem is that they don't have any nades for the retake, usually having the smoke, and that, that's so important to pressure the T's out of position in fear that you're going to the smoke defuse. But here we go. We've got the first challenge there from all of my He's going to take down Simple straight away. That's a good kill coming in from him, and that, that will put the pressure on the flank as his teammates attack the front. This is really strong right now. Angel's getting really just pressured in this back area, but they are going for Oscar there, and Angel will wow. take full abuse of that. Flusher got two kills in two taps. And Angel and Oscar did exactly the same to spin the round around. Straight for the big guns here. Can't afford to mess around with the Antico nonsense as they have an eight round deficit. So double AK, double FAMAS, or Galil, excuse me. Simple, just rocking the Deeg. Wonder if that means he will be the uh, aggressive T author. It is his time to shine. Although we've seen him harass so badly with the AK towards B that the other team have called him a hacker before. Sour grape stat. Don't taste very nice. Unless you like sour things. Like sour grapes. Yeah, indeed. Oh. Fnatic. They've done all the damage here. They've, they've got a kill on Takusha. Angel's down to 19 HP. This, this is where things can start to get a little bit scary because uh, all it takes is... Uh, for, you know, for one more kind of mishap, basically, for one more accident at work. And then uh, the round can be won by the ecoing team. And, well, the, uh, the force ball team. And there it is. That is the mishap that Fnatic were looking for. And all of a sudden, Hellraisers have one player who's quickly wounded. And, oh my god, they're going to do it. Surely not. Fnatic holding down these strong positions here. GW's in the back. He gets the bomb as well. And he's got his knife out for some reason. Oscar now in a one-on-one -on -one against Olaf Meister. He's got that eagle long range. And Oscar now can actually win this round. And it had the JW being able to hold the flank at least. At least then, Oscar would have this really impossible decision of does he go for the plant or the engagement? Because he's going to be crossing somebody's reticle at some point. But uh, this is going to be a little bit easier for him. Ooh, the vent is not open. Which is going to be a pain for Olaf Meister as he will have to announce his position now. But the duel will begin. He must know that Oscar is tagged. Just a qu question of elimination. How much time does Oscar have to uh, move off the site? Oh, only one shot required and Olaf Meister fast enough to get it. Fnatic move to 13. So Hellraiser is still looking shaky. I mean, they are playing the best teams in the world. But that said, they are still looking shaky on these, uh, these anti-eco rounds. Still require some work. Yeah, yeah. It's... it's uh it's absolutely one of the, the, the telltale signs of a very, very good team is how they how good their anti ecos are because anyone can win, you know, well, I, I wouldn't say anyone can win the buy rounds, but it's not just about winning the buy rounds, it's about giving away as little edges as possible when the other team is ecoing. Because if, if your economy is going to be really, if you're going to keep it in good stead by losing as little people as possible and generally winning those rounds, then of course you're going to have more edges play, and they will, you're going to have edges. And right now it's a horrible buy here for them. They force it up. Two AKs, two pistols, but that said, it also get a kill in the middle. So, uh, Hellraisers, they just have to finish together now as a team on one of the bomb sites or take middle away from Fnatic, and they should have a strong round to win with. So, standard stack on the site. 
trying to be as sneaky, as unpredictable as possible. Hellraiser with a slow advance, but they've got a player on short, thanks to JW going down. Sticko gets taken down in isolation by Olaf Meister. What is the reaction here from Hellraiser? The problem is that they have a lack of the future has a Molotov, but uh, that, that makes life very difficult. They have to try to open up in the angles directly. However, they will hit the shots this time around, and that's, uh, that's good. Because, of course, one way to make that situation a lot easier for yourself and to put a lot, a lot less variance in it is to use your grenades to force the players out of position. And that, of course, creates uh, a spot where their engagements are no longer fit. They're, they're, no, no, they're no longer able to play their favorable engagements. And uh, that's much more consistent instead of you opening up into the angles that they want to hold. So, Hellraiser's though, they didn't have the utility left, having such an awful buy, but they may do, and they survive with four players. So, Hellraiser's will get some really good bank from this round, and uh, Flush is, is going to be saving that mag. And I would love to see when Flush goes with the mag. Where is Flush going to go with this mag? Where, James? Could play... Could play B, checkers with a flashbang. Or to try and push I'm the squeaky I'm door. I want to say mid. Mid. Mid would make a, make sense as well. Let's go mid. Where is he going? Because he could push squeaky door and just wait by the kind of brick opening. He's got the big yeah, events. First call. Thank you very much. That's 10 unicoins for me. Who has the flash, James? Well, he has a nade instead of a flash. These guys favoring the HEs. He wants to maim Dan. But he went bounce as well, I don't think. I think the Flash has, would have more utility with the Mag 7, but there we go. I think he had it left over. Maybe he did. That would make sense as well. Yeah. Okay, well, Fnatic have uh, decent positions on some of these players. Look at this. Oh, he's going aggressive there. He's going to get taken down, though, by the nade of simple speaking of nades, but the door will be open once again. I'm just going to look for that Deagle. And we'll have the finish of the Hellraiser side onto this B-bomb site. Two players though in vicinity. Flusher, uh, uh, chief amongst them. He's got the uh, he's got force out position. Oh, that's so unfortunate for him. And uh, the face there from JW will be met by four players. Unlucky, my that's friend. That's a good Molotov. It's going from through the window because it stops uh, people peeking the vent room from anywhere on site, basically, apart from where Sticko was uh, boosted on a box in the first half. That was very nice. I believe it's Stiko, by the way. Stiko. Like Hiko. I'm sure you're correct. Stiko. Four Molotovs for the Hellraiser side, so that's a good uh, start to an anti eco round, but let's see how well it will pay off. Angel positioning itself for a nice grenade, and that is a bit of a savage sh uh, shutdown of JW. Crims, you can see he's up on the top area. It's a bit of an awkward angle to spot. Olaf Meister maybe being the bait, but there's a short push here from the Hellraiser side. But Oscar's going to get shot straight in the face by Olaf Meister. Was not expecting that. Goodbye for him. Wow, really weird position here for Simple. He's going to be up, uh, up on the uh, upper position there on top of the ramp. And finds himself to kill on Flusher. So kind of a weird uh, anti eco round from Hellraiser, but it's going to do the job. Olaf Meister's found himself an AK though, and it is Olaf Meister, so I would be a little bit worried. Yeah, now things are getting interesting. How far will he push? Simple's got 4 HP from being dinked earlier. I'm sure the Fnatic guys will know that. Crim's looking for the person who's surely lurking towards uh, vents. And that should be the end of the round now. Olaf Meister going forward to save. Olaf Meister walks a lot in these kind of situations, a lot more than most other players, which you will notice if you watch his POVs. Kind of a cool thing. Maybe it will affect your own game. Can Simple get far away enough from the bomb to survive? <laughs> he goes from 4 HP to 2. And there we go. Hellraiser surviving with 3 players, closing the gap to 6 rounds now. Well. Well. Well, Dan. Well, what? Are you well? I don't think so, James. I would say, I was going to say that's swell. But there we go, you ruined it. AWP onto Angel. Presumably he has a spawn timing here. There are various timings. He's going to go over towards B. As aforementioned, you can have a timing towards mid as well to stop the CTs crossing towards the white box. We saw evidence of that earlier on. Simple looking for the opening frag onto JW who gets taken down in the corner. So Flusher is going to move away from the B bomb site to try to stop the CTs from pushing through Z connector into CT spawn where they would then be behind enemy lines, and it would be very hard for Fnatic to defend. 
So, Flusher is waiting with bated breath behind the smoke in middle there. Of course, Fnatic having to give up middle. They don't know exactly what's going on there. They want that info. He's moving up. He's moving up. He's going to stop the head of Olaf. So Ray comes in, but he misses the shots. And Olaf will get the kill. But meanwhile, Hellraisers have the main push coming towards B. And that little push from Simple might leave a little bit of obscurity in the situation. Does delay rotation, but if the player on the site can stay, stay alive, if Pronax can keep himself in good shape here, then this should be an easy round for Fnatic to win. But he'll go down immediately. And in such a case, now we have a round on our hands for Hellraisers. Three versus two, the bomb planted. However, two other players are on the site, and that's less than ideal in a situation like this. Yeah, you Sticker's only got three HP as well. Yeah, you only want one player on the site, Max, in this position. They even got a decent plant, the safe plant that is visible from the uh, far away. Now, Steeko, three HP. Oldmeister desperately trying to take him down, but he's going to... Oh, wow. Also comes into play there by his checkers, and now it's all on him. With Crims looking for the defuse, and Oscar just has to move into the range, and then boom. Crims is dead. Good save there by Hellraisers. They're now making a game of this. They uh, they reset Fnatic. They dealt with their anti ecos fairly well. There was a little bit of uh, some hiccups here and there. It didn't look as good as Fnatic's anti ecos but they get they're closing. They're closing the rounds, and they've won some rounds uh, with with quite a few players left alive. And they've got eight thir eight to thirteen now, and they've, they're building a good bank. Credit to Stiko um, as well. He waited for the his teammates to engage first, and then straight out to so they had as many guns firing as possible. So they really made the use made as much use of himself as possible, bearing in mind he only had 3 HP. Olaf Meister presumably finding uh, some footsteps in the corner of that smoke and just going up to take a shot to the chest. So early advantage for Fnatic, but they've got that one AWP and just pistols on the rest of the team. Can Hellraisers survive this aggression? Two plays down so far. There goes the AWP. We'll see if any of the other teammates of Fnatic can retrieve it. But they are running out now. Only Flusher and JW remain. The answer to your question is yes. Yes, they can. Filing all the aggressions. And uh, this will be 13 to 9. Do you think Hellraisers are going to bring it all the way? My me immediate question is, is Simple going to pick up the AWP following the round? He's lurking around the AWP, maybe expecting a Fnatic play to try and collect it. And that might have been the play for JW, just waiting. Simple running into, this, into his crosshairs, but JW will now have to change his position. Can they bring it back, Hellraisers? Um, I mean, potentially, if they can keep Fnatic's economy broken, then I don't see why not, but every anti-eco or anti-force buy is another opportunity for Hellraisers to throw around. So, uh, again, I still lack confidence in them in that scenario, so uh, those are still a minefield for them to cross Princess Diana style. Because she used to go through minefields. Mm -hmm. Well, not through minefields, but I'm, I'm sure she was no, had a photo swap near one, Dan. Anyway, Oscar with the AWP. Two orbs now for Fnatic, changing their approach on round 23. So far, so good. Won't even be an orb that takes the first frag. It's going to be Pronax taking Angel down. So Hellraiser should have no idea that there are two orbs on the map just yet. Oh, okay, we're going to get some guys coming in here. As now Hellraiser start to fight back in middle. The Wall of Smoke's just dissipating as they make their way across, and lots of jewels here. Flusher goes in for the finish, and he will get it onto Simple. That's really important, putting it back to a 3-on-3, three three. and with Oscar so low as well, things will get a little bit awkward trying to actually push into the bomb sites. He has got the orb though, and he's uh, in position by a forklift, so Fnatic kind of kind of shut out to an extent to this uh, A-bomb site. But the nades are beginning to run low here for the Ts. There's still a decent decent amount left to get a little bit of extra delay, but. That's why Fnatic have lots of grenades themselves. And Oscar's in trouble, missing that shot now. They know he's in this corner. They're on the angle. Is, this, is there a smoke to help him out of this position? Is there something to help Oscar out of this spot? He's going to find his, wa his way out of it just barely. But no, Crims will finally get the punish there just in the nick of time before Oscar gets the safety. Kucha goes down by quad, and now it's all on Steeko against three players who are quickly approaching his position. Critical damage done by Crims. Looks like we're going to get the hold on the defuse. Steeko's going in. Oh, Steeko! Oh, he did it! I think, yeah, he did it. Wow, Steeko, what a clutch there! Just running straight in there, knowing what had to be done, and executing. Steeko, very nice play. Definitely, I think in that situation, like if you're the other player, I suppose you could either play around the corner of the smoke and try and spot the player doing what he can, or body block, like just swinging your knife in the air in the smoke, which is, which would look absolutely ridiculous, especially if you lost around doing that. I can't imagine the tweets you would receive. Three round lead now for 
Fnatic, the gap is closing again and again. Fnatic going for the force here. We've got three fan masses. The CZ onto Flusher. They are limited on resources, but they are high on skill. Simple look, it could be traded. Indeed, he will be. JW will go down as well. So the man advantage goes the way of Hellraisers for a few seconds. Kucha gets taken down in isolation. And now the uh, last three Hellraisers players are spread out. And again, they are on the anti-force, experiencing some troubles. 3 versus 3 again, getting these uh, pretty interesting situations in the mid rounds. As Fnatic starts to uh, look a little bit troubled with their lead. Hellraisers slowly trying to work their way in now into the A bomb site. Angel just holding the flank. Could go middle if he wants to, but uh, just going to regroup into A main. And Fnatic, without the information or the enough players alive to really go for any information plays, so stay settled to their setups. Flusher in that really dangerous position, that one shot range with the CZ. 570 to 50 is that really, this is like a really dangerous position. We used to see Maniac in this position doing incredible de uh, jobs with that uh, the pistols, but they've managed to handle this well with the nades. They forced Flusher into a, a much worse position, taking him down, and now Angel's going to get the bomb planted as well. In comes the rotation from Fnatic. He's going to miss the initial shot, but he's got the second one. Fantastic work by him, and Fnatic will go down, and, and Hellraiser's is in this position now look fantastic what is the uh, situation here for the money of fanatic uh, how much should they ha have on the uh, loss bonus okay, all max, the money then they got 3400 the max loss bonus from losing five rounds in a row so they look to be uh going for the full buy in the next round again a tricky situation for our raisers no round here is really a given for them despite the lack of uh supply here for fanatic to take a stock off turn you know, Fnatic's still capable of doing a great much damage, I would say. My English fails me again. It's a good start from Crims, the one dig coming down to Angel. Coming down on Angel, through his face, through his head. Leaving a great cavity where his brain used to be. And again, hardship is experienced by Hellraisers on a no-buy from Fnatic, who have now picked up two AKs and have a two-man advantage. Yeah, JW is going to be rotating that one of those AKs. He's picked himself up a Molotov as well. Smoke will be going away soon here on this uh, choke point as uh, Hellraiser set set themselves up and Molotov oh, nice and time there. That's going to delay them and allow extra rotation at the cost of his life, but extra rotation. And that said, he did drop an AK as well. But this is getting awkward right now because they have to get their way in here. They do have time, 40 seconds on the clock to work with as they start to push closer and closer. Great counter grenades, but also like, even better shots coming out of Hellraisers. Just Flusher left against three players. He's on the bomb site with that D. He's going to get the first kill. Seeker goes down. That's the bomber as well. He's going for the peaks of the D. I don't know that he can do this. It's so difficult. He goes for the reload, and he's got no time. Oscar's going to bear down on his position. He is going to take him to the cleaners, and that's 12-13. Hellraisers one away now from completely removing all the deficit. It was a huge deficit. How many rounds have they won in a row? Lots. Has it been every single... No, no, no. It's been like... How many? All of those. Eight. So... In a row. Fnatic have finally got uh, their own big buy coming out. They did essentially eco in that last round. So AWP. Lots of nades coming in as well. Three diffuse kits, helmets, the lot. Got the boost failing, unfortunately. Will they have time to even... They, they can't risk doing it, doing it again, really. I don't um, know. There's no one over towards A-Main at the moment for the Cs. I've never seen someone fail that boost before, by the way, in a, in a professional match. We've seen it a few times, but not in such a fashion where they just fall off the edge I've seen people onto the site. fail it when they're doing it backwards because it's so easy, James. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's when I've seen people fail it. Yeah, that's when I've seen them fail it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so Fnatic will stack three people over towards the uh, A-Bomb site. They've chosen to give up mid, which has been taken over taken in kind by the Hellraiser squad. They're going to have two players there. Looks like the bomb is just outside the vent area at the moment. Not sure if the vent has been popped. The Kucha starting to clear things out, making sure nobody's in the position that you often see Kiyoshima playing. Just behind the box there. So will they start to play B? They need to watch out because there is a two-man flank coming in from A. In fact, they're going to go for the T boost over into B. But are they going to do it fast enough? Hellraiser's in the vents now with only one person on the site to defend. Olof comes in though, he might just catch the weak player, Simple Off Guard, indeed he will, that's the frag, 4 versus 4 now, and the problem is, is that 
How are aces are kind of, uh, they're not really in position and they've got, have, have already a lot of pressure. The bomb will go down. There's two players stuck on the site. Kucha has to win these jewels. He's going to get the first one and he will go down, but the trade is real. And Ultimeister cannot bully his way through the vent room. So that is likely that. And the nope, he's going to get caught off by Angel and that's 13 13. But uh, for Fnatic, you know, they, they have 13 rounds. They still have the max bonus, so they can still get, they can still feel buys all the time. But this is looking kind of weird actually right now. How is this going to take down Fnatic? They have the economic lead. This, the match is almost over. Fnatic have to be getting really frustrated now. They have lost so many rounds in a row. Yeah. They ecoed. They went for the full buy. They expected the win to win, I have no doubt. But they failed once more. Yeah, Harris is playing pretty darn good on the T side. That is for sure. So let's see what the approach is. Olaf Meister has creeped through the smoke as uh, Hellraisers did in the first half. Let's see if it yields any results for him. Nobody uh, looking into A main at the moment for the Hellraisers side. In a stark contrast, say Flipside for example, who would commonly have two Ts facing uh, an AWP and a Rifler. So mid has been given up again and uh, Crims will fall because of it. Olaf Meister finds himself stuck towards A main now, paranoid that somebody might be coming in from the back. He knows that somebody's in Squeaky. And again, Arrays is still passive towards A main. The bomb now moving towards Squeaky while the Franklin coming in. Steko's done so much damage in this round. Three men for him and he'll make his exit. Steko is really legit, man. That, that, what a great round from him. And he's going to get the uh, the bomb planted for sure for his team. In comes Flusher. In comes Pronax. Flusher needs a pretty good situation, good engagement, but Hellraisers have a good post plant setup in the... Oh no, that's awesome from Flusher. He's going to get a kill and excellent damage onto a player at quad. They don't have any nades to finish him off, and the time is starting to dwindle here for Flusher to make this happen, but he's already done critical damage to Angel as well. He's looking for that last kill. He knows exactly where Angel is. He sees the shadow, but he can't get it done. I thought for sure he'll, he'll be able to pre-fire that and get the kill, but Angel somehow finds the headshot. Wow, that was just stunning there. First of all, Steko. And then Flusher, but still Hellraisers will win the round. 14-13 and Fnatic forced to these horrible buys again and again. They can't afford not to buy. That shadow was so juicy, Dan. It was like the yeah. most moist carrot cake you've ever seen in your life. It was dying to be eaten. But no, it was full of rat poison, Dan. And the rats will have their day. So Fnatic going for a fast push. They've got control of the bomb for now. Kucha's there to try and defend, though. He's going to advance his position and try and catch out a Fnatic player. He's got teammates running through the vents, but Pronax is going to have the awkward angle to take down Angel. Four versus two, Fnatic looking to even things up now. And look at the money. Well, we'll see the money for Hellraisers a bit later on. If it comes to that, we'll start to uh, pull the Fnatic players back down to their level. Two versus three. And there's still a minute on the clock for Hellraisers to play with, but they have no idea of the positions of the other two Fnatic players. It's a really big problem for Fnatic because... Well, their money sucks, James. It really, really sucks. And uh, they, they just have to win all the rest of the rounds, to be honest. And Olaf Meister, so he's poised to get the first kills here. The first contact, and that's going to be the distraction that JW needs. He comes in from the back. He doesn't get anything done with a drive-by, though. But it will be worthy in the end. So Olaf Meister capitalizes on the distraction, and JW capitalizes on the distraction then caused by him. So, well done to Fnatic. They will win that round, but still Harry's is in with the buy now. Whoever loses this round is going to be broken in what could be the last round. Just looking, I mean, look at the buy from the uh, the CTs here. It's not spectacular. The money's starting to get ropey for both teams now. 14 to 14. Harry's is looking to go two for zero in uh, this day of the face it stage three league for 2015. So Stiko has been instrumental in leading his side here on the T side, getting back into this match. Does he have enough left to take them over the line? Again, mid has been abandoned by Fnatic, and Hellraisers will, will begin the slow crawl. Stiko, man, he's, I think he's in a really good position here because he's over by the door, and we have a, an A main push, so Stiko could get behind them, essentially, as his teammates go for the initial engagement here. There's the initial challenge. Stiko has the door open, and he could capitalize as he has to cross back over. Krims looks for the shot, but Stiko's going to win the battle, and that's going to give a distraction for Oscar, who will get an easy snap onto JW. Olofmeister has to push in. He's got to do damage, but he'll get traded on, and after all the chaos, two versus two now. Flusher and Pronax are going to wake their way in, and Angel and Stiko, and we'll have a good post-plant setup 
It's not the most ideal plant in the world, of course, but still, Steco, man, this guy's been on point so far. And as you said, the team that loses this round is screwed. And Angel gets the first kill on the Pronax. It's just one player left, Lusher. He goes down to Angel as well, 15-14, and Hellraiser surely will be able to close the match from this point because Fnatic have absolutely nothing left to buy with. Flusher and Olaf Meister can buy something. Olaf's gone AWP, no armor. We'll see if he chooses to throw it to JW or just will rock with it himself. Look at this buy from Fnatic. They, we, we saw, I think we saw a similar run from them in this half as well, but with less armor, just the AWP and the pistols. And I think they might have either won it or done a lot of damage, but they're going to need to do it all this round. Otherwise, it's another game loss for them. JW with a fast push is going to not pay off for him. Done a bit of damage to Simple. He'll see the bomb, but that's basically useless information at this point very early on in the round. Again, Fnatic putting many players over towards A, abandoning mid once more. This hasn't really worked out for them, but many rounds have gone down to the wire. But will it go their way this time? Olaf Meister will see Simple and take him down, finish him off for his teammate. Here he comes, Olaf Meister snaps down Angel, but that's all he's going to get. Flusher and Pronex is up to them, but it's not going to happen at this rate. Flusher in with a fast snap with the Deagle. There's two more players to find. Flusher's trying to do it, but it's not going to happen. The multiple challenges were just too much. They overwhelmed him.